Hello there, I'm Christine and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a walkthrough of Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot by Paul Hewson. Um, I'm going to change uh, camera so you can see the deck as we go through it. So here is the box. It is done by Lo Scarabero and uh, it looks very interesting box here. And we have the mages. Uh, in the little white book, Paul refers to um, how the mages are modelled on the work of Attila. And as Attila believed, he uh, had it, that um, his way was like the original way. Uh, I'll let you make your own mind up about that. But here are the cards. So this is the back of the cards. They're a very light card and the card stock's okay. I shuffle my cards gently, so um, I don't need to have um, endurable card stock. But having said that, it's good. So here we have our Fool. I hope you can see the Fool there and he's a typical Fool. And then, oh, I'll turn him over. <laughs> went in the wrong order then we have our oops sorry juggler and he's your typical Marseille street musician street musician magician street entertainer as as you would see it and there's elements in these cards I like like I used to like the monkey um, with that because it goes back to that time at that time where um, street entertainers had all sorts of curiosities. Uh, we have our female Pope as worded here and uh, she's got her book because she's about study. We have our Empress. I like the way the Empress is facing on the side in this deck because you can do directional readings with these cards. And there we have our Emperor. And for me, if I'm doing a directional reading, if these two are facing each other and talking, um, I find that's a good thing. Because for me, a lot of times in a reading, these people are, are couples, in a sense. That's just what I do. So I like the directionality of these cards. Then we have our Pope, who is um, typical of... Um, your Marseille deck. We have the lovers or love card. Uh, it's a it's a good card. There's a lot of red there, so there's a lot of um, passion and things going on there. The chariot, another good card, in my opinion. I'm giving you my opinion. Here we have our justice. Our Hermit. The Hermit in this deck faces right to the, which often is read as the future. And so therefore, um, he shines light on the future, which is great if you are asking a question and you're sort of wondering what might happen if I do this. Therefore, you shine light on that. If this card was to turn up and the next card is what it's shining light on, well, that could be something in the future and that helps you explore that. So I, that's what I like about it. Your wheels, a typical wheel of fortune. These cards are very bright in colour and some of the images are um, different. You have fortitude, which is strength. Um, and it was different because most people are used to seeing a lion, but it's about having the perseverance to mend the broken vase. We have our hanged man. And he reflects back to a lot of old decks, old Marseille decks that ha the hangman did carry bags because he's also a traitor. There's many meanings with the cards going back uh, through time of what actually people were hung for. So that represents that. So that's quite the, typical of that. Our death card is facing the past. So he's clearing the way the past um, which I which I think can be a good thing uh, with that 
So it's very good for directional readings, the major arcana. Then we have our temperance, beautifully pouring from one jug to the other the balance that is needed. We have our devil card, typical going on of all the things that are temptation to us um, and as grotesque as ever. We have our tower card and with the tower card, this, uh, I think that's the yew tree. I've got a, a deck where there is no tower. It was drawn pre-building, if you like, and it's a yew tree that the thunderstorm and lightning's coming down on, which has some symbolism, which maybe is explained in Paul Hewson's book. Then we have our beautiful star. She's an androgynous figure. Um, it's a bright, optimistic um, card. It's interesting to have the nice dolphin there. Uh, and the moon. With that, for me, I like this moon card because the water's turbulent, and generally, when the moon appears in a reading, there is an emotional turbulence going on. So, water emotions, turbulence. So, the imagery sort of is quite well done. For, in my opinion for the majors then you have the Sun it's about the sharing going on with that and that's a beautiful card and judgment the whole resurrection your calling second chances um, and it's interesting when you look at these two but they are um, behind the wall you know, you and me against the world stuff, to then over the wall and climbing over the pit to have a, another go at it. So <laughs> that's um, a really, that to me gives life a, a, a second chance with that. And then our last card is our world and she is above the clouds. She is on top of the world um, and there's healing there with that. So, um, might have a big coin in a hand with that so that's a nice optimistic card so that is um, the majors with that deck uh, it also comes with a significator card here and these are all your astrology symbols starting from your Aries through to your Pisces with the fish in baskets um, and they are some sort of little creatures, spirit, spirit nymphs or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. But uh, that's, um, I'm not sure why that card's in the deck. It's not explained in the little white book to my knowledge. But uh, there you go. If you use a significator, that can be just a general significator and then it's that in the Celtic cross and what's crossing it and this is just a product card I don't know what people call them so then we get to the miners and I can't remember which ones I put first we'll go with the coins in the um, I'm going to look at the book now so interpreting the card is as it said before it's based on um, a, a Tiller's card interpretation that he insisted were traditional and uh, that is that's okay most of those meanings fit in with what's generally out there with it but then we get to the minor arcana and with the for me with the system I use it's sort of these cards clash but having said that they are in alignment with Rider Waite Smith style cards as far as um, I'll start with the coins the coins are of the cardinal virtue prudence which is about money and being conservative with your money prudent with your money and having the wherewithal to do what you want through your prudence um, it's considered a feminine card and it's also of the element earth. Uh, I read with a different system of a different lot of elements. And so for me, it, um, 
it work differently and that's okay but if you're working with a rider weight system and you are which i think right um weight borrowed from um attila's work anyway uh, please if you're a historian correct me um i'm not an historian uh other people do that really well but uh this is where they are but getting back to just showing you the cards here we have our lovely ace of coins and it is lush and it does carry cover the green of the money and the lushness which is a money color if you're wanting to use this for a little oh what do you call it bit of magic that would be a great talisman because green is the color of money and then we have our tour coins um, things are going well coming together nicely our three of coins and he's sort of blowing his trumpet that you know he has knew someone has done well getting an accolade your four and she's typical of the four holding on because if you can you can't see it closely but with this figure she's holding on that tight onto the cornucopia that so she looks like her eyes are bulging um, there's a lot of detail in the faces with these cards here we have our five of coins which is nice this very representation in my opinion of um, a weight style deck but there's a lot more detail and different symbology with it you can get right into it then there's the seven of coins your eight of coins your nine of coins and the ten of coins everybody's well we're all in the big house as usual then we have our knave looking back our knight looking forward your queen and your king then there's the cups which they've done the hearts here like it's in the playing cards which at, um, I'm a playing card reader predominantly so this is what first attracted to me this because I saw it on someone's YouTube and I thought oh this majors are gonna these minors are gonna marry with playing cards really well um, but so yes cups are cups and hearts are hearts and they all are water and they flow so that makes sense with the beautiful ace of cups and the beautiful two of cups these are beautiful suit actually and the three of cups is a little bit more betrothal and commitment there compared to the other typical right away smith where there's usually a bit of a party going on then we have our four of cups he's quite a nice looking card and your five of cups your six of cups when you get into the imagery the detail you can read a lot into it and work your story and your reading with these which is which is a good thing with them your seven of cups your nine and your ten happy happy joy joy your knave your knight and your queen and your king oh, here we have our swords uh, and their background is orange uh, where as I'm used to them being like a more of a winter card but that's okay and two of cards two of swords here and if you do look into the image they're about to do a duel and a lot a lot of decisions were made through a duel happening so um, that is still representational of um, indecision and solving a decision in a different way then your typical three of swords and your four of swords sanctuary 
and your five of swords and your six of swords seven eight nine He's a bit perplexed looking at him. He's quite perplexed and he's got the bars around him, if you like. And then you have your Ten of Swords, who is quite sad. Uh, so it's all representational of swords and, um, you know, the problems and things that they have. Then you have your Knave, your Knight and your queen and your king of swords so while I've got the swords we did look at the swords Houston says in his booklet the European iconography of the sword symbol of authority emblem and cardinal virtue is justice a bit like Zorro he was a bit like that Early card readers considered the sword suit and an unhappy one signifying excess lawsuits, division, misfortune or disappointment. In card play, swords are considered masculine suit and modern cartomancers often link them with the alchemical element of air, although this can conflict with the traditional rather gloomy interpretation of the suit. Today it is read in to represent the acting of discriminating, discerning and making a judgment. And those meanings do ring true with the system I use. So um, that's okay. And then finally, we have our baton. And here's our ace of baton. What used to do my head in for me, because different cards speak to different people, was I would look at the batons and I would see this emblem here and I would want to associate it with diamonds. Um, interesting. So here we have the two of batons. He's a little bit like the four of cups. And we have the three of batons. The four. That's the typical like your four of wands in um, your eye double swift you know clearly there's a banquet and a party going on there your five your six your seven your eight your nine and your ten so there's quite some interesting symbology in this. Um, your knave, your knight, your queen, and your king. So I guess the orange would be the fire, perhaps. Uh, different. So that there you have it. Oh, what does he say about baton pieces? Um, oh yeah, the baton, rod, cudgel, wand, and pillar are all emblems of the cardinal virtue fortitude. Modern cardinals is often attract attribute. Sorry, them to the alchemy element fire, sometimes air. Yeah, I attribute them to air. But fire is the general one that's out there, and that's okay. In card games, batons like swords are considered a masculine suit, and in general, the suit signs energy, support, willpower, and enterprise. They were equated by Attila's school of cardency with the French suit paving tiles known as diamonds in the Anglo Saxon decks. So he has put a lot of research into it and, and put down his way of doing things then the book the author a student of the occult and paranormal for over 40 years paul hewson is the author of a wide range of books exploring esoteric matters among them they are widely acclaimed the mystical origins of the tarot he lives and works in la california 
and um, the mystical orange of the tarot and the I ISBN is in this book if you're wanting to grab a copy of it speaking of which there's a fellow YouTube tarot reader that I know who has Paul Hewson's big book and is deeply delving into it and we were chatting and I said well I've got the deck I'm happy to do a walkthrough and uh, see um, you can see how the cards go so feel free I'll put it in the comments in the bottom of the video um, how you can go to Robert Farah's YouTube channel T and Tarot where he explores Hewson's book at a deeper level and gives a, a commentary on that but here are the cut they were the cards uh, in my opinion different decks talk to different people in different times and it's all part of your channel tarot journey and that that's okay um, it might be a deck that talks to you I hope it is it's parts of it that talk to me I could read it as a majors only deck and yes <laughs> I'll stop there before I dig a hole too deep uh, so thank you for watching I'd love to hear your feedback on the Dame Fortune's Wheel of Tarot if you've read with it and how you find it um, and I <laughs> look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks for watching because your energy is important bye